Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is one that I've actually wanted to do for a while. I feel like I say that in every video. Every video is like a very anticipated video for me to make, which I guess is great. I'm just excited about everything. But yeah, I'm going to be reviewing a ball python care guide from PetSmart. <laughs> So literally a couple months ago, I went to PetSmart and grabbed a bunch of care guides because I was like, this would be cool to go through them and see how much information I actually agree with and how much I think is bullshit. I was like, that sounds like a good time. And by the way, this is not an original idea. Emmalyn Sampson actually already did this, but she did a bunch of PetSmart care guides in one video. And I just wanted to kind of focus in on one. So I will link Emma's channel down below. Make sure to check her out. I almost forgot, by the way, I'm with Tesla, my VPI Lesser Exanthic Ball Python. I have two ball pythons that I keep as pets. I've been keeping ball pythons for a while and I'm pretty familiar with their care. And I've also um, done a lot of things to improve the care of my snakes over time. And if you're new here, you may not be aware that I despise chain pet stores with all of my being. I always discourage people from ever going into one to get an animal basically because they source their pets from terrible places and usually they give out terrible information. Some PetSmart employees actually own the animals and know what they're doing and will give you helpful advice, but a lot of them don't even have these pets at home and only know what's in this care guide. And that's why I thought it'd be interesting to go through it because if you went to PetSmart and you were gonna go buy a ball python, they would probably hand this to you and be like, here you go, this is everything you need to know. Spoiler alert, this is not everything you need to know. Let's go through it. Getting to know your ball python. Dazzling and docile, it says here. Ball pythons, they get their names because they curl into a tight ball with their heads pulled into the center when nervous. So that's already not really true. They, like, I, I hear a lot of people say that they curl up into a ball when they're nervous. They curl up into a ball just when they're resting. Like when they go to hide, go to sleep, they just curl up into a ball. It doesn't necessarily mean they're like nervous or stressed out specifically. Experience level intermediate, I actually agree with this. I'm glad they didn't put beginner because ball pythons are often considered beginner snakes and actually I disagree with that because although their care isn't actually super difficult, they can often be picky eaters and there are different challenges you'll run into with ball pythons that you might not necessarily run into as frequently with other snakes and a lot of the times beginners just aren't super uh, aware of these things. Yeah, I would agree that they're definitely probably more like intermediate as far as experience level, I agree with that. Size, they grow up to be about 60 inches or 152 centimeters. I agree there, that's true. Lifespan, they can live up to 30 years. That's probably about true as well. Tesla was just trying to escape, first of all. Diet, ball pythons are carnivores and feed on rodents. Cool. Personality, they're docile and actually curious. Behavior, ball pythons are more active at night. So all of that is true. And then there's a picture here of what looks to be an example of a ball python setup. And this just looks absolutely terrible. Like this is just a terrible example. And after we go through all of the actual like care specifics over here, we can go back to this picture and I can explain more in detail why this is not a good example of a ball python setup but it looks like they're just showing you a picture of a setup to help give you an idea. And it's really misleading because if you went by this picture and set up an enclosure that looked just like this, you would be in trouble. As far as temperatures go, there's the day temperature, 80 to 85 degrees is the target range. It says the warm side, you want it to be 90 degrees. Night temperature, 70 to 80 degrees. All of that is pretty good. Like as far as the temperatures they give here, I don't really have a huge issue with any of those. Humidity, it says 30 to 50%. So I disagree there. I think that 30% for a ball python is probably a little bit low. Now, if your enclosure dropped to 30%, sometimes it wouldn't be the end of the world. Do you see Tesla? He's like, bye. Maybe I should put Tesla away. I, I don't think he's into this. Tesla. I'm sorry, I'll put you back in your enclosure. You can you can go. Anyways, I thought it would be fun to have you in this video. Tesla wants to say goodbye. Say goodbye to Tesla. 
by Tesla. So as far as humidity goes, I think a better target range would be about 50%. Like I think you wanna probably keep it at around 50%. If you kept your enclosure as low as 30% most of the time, then chances are I feel like your ball python would probably end up having issues shedding. So I try to keep my enclosures around 50% and I obviously let it fluctuate a little bit. But when I see that my snake's about to go into shed, I will obviously mist the enclosure down and I'll let it go up higher past 50%. And then, you know, fluctuation is completely good and normal, but I just think 30% is a little bit low. So how do I set up a ball python terrarium? We're on the next page now. Ball pythons should live alone in a glass terrarium at at least 40 gallons with a tightly secure screen lid. They should live alone. Happy they got that one right. It says in a glass terrarium. Again, I disagree there. Obviously a glass terrarium isn't the worst thing ever, but there are definitely better options out there. I keep my snakes in PVC enclosures, which are opaque on all sides except for the front doors and enclosures that are not glass and you can't see through them make the snakes feel much more comfortable and secure and hidden and ball pythons really like to be in more of like a dark hidden place as opposed to a glass enclosure now if you keep your ball python in a glass enclosure you can still do so but you just need to make sure you're filling it up with a lot of like foliage and hides and just make sure that there isn't just a bare open glass enclosure but I would actually probably recommend a PVC enclosure over a glass enclosure any day. So I disagree with, you know, suggesting specifically a glass terrarium. Although it can work, I don't think it's the best option. And then it says at least 40 gallons. So I don't think 40 gallons is a terrible minimum enclosure size for a ball python. But I personally wouldn't keep an adult ball python in a 40 gallon tank. I just think it's a little bit small. I think 40 gallons, let me double check the dimensions, 36 inches by 18 inches by 16 inches. So I keep my snakes in enclosures that are four feet long. Not, not all of my snakes, of course. Um, my boas in bigger enclosures, don't worry. I keep my adult ball python in a four foot long enclosure just because that's pretty close to the length that he is. That's just my personal preference. I like to try to give them a lot of space to explore. I personally just don't think for an adult ball python, 40 gallons is like a wonderful suggestion. And another thing I wanna point out, and this is a good place to point it out at, is the whole point of this care guide is to sell stuff from PetSmart. And PetSmart does not sell reptile enclosures that are larger than 40 gallons. So if they said, hey, you actually need a four foot enclosure for the ball python, but you have to buy it somewhere else, you have to buy it online somewhere, they'd be like losing money basically is the way they look at it. So that's why they're suggesting 40 gallons because they can sell that to you. However, more important things than making sales such as taking proper care of your reptiles. So next it says, line the bottom of the terrarium with reptile carpet or two inches of reptile bedding. Remove droppings frequently and change bedding monthly more often if needed. I disagree with reptile carpet. I actually don't like using reptile carpet for most reptiles, but specifically snakes, I don't think it's like a great option. Reasons why I don't like it is one, it's not gonna hold humidity like hardly at all. When your snake's shedding and you wanna raise humidity, the reptile carpet isn't gonna do as good of a job as if you just use dirt. Also, keeping your ball python on carpet isn't very natural. They don't live on carpet in the wild. And my personal approach to keeping reptiles is trying to replicate their natural environment to some degree at least. I forgot to mention this, but also when your snake poops, it's going to just, the carpet's going to absorb all of the fluids that come out of your snake with the poop. And it's going to be just harder to clean than just scooping up a bunch of dirt in the spot that your snake pooped in and throwing it away. You have to like clean the entire carpet. It's just not efficient. It's not, it's not efficient at all. I don't know. I would personally recommend using literally just dirt. Some people use cypress mulch. Uh, some people use a mixture of things. I wouldn't use reptile carpet. It also does say or two inches of reptile bedding, but that could mean anything. They make reptile sand. They make reptile like aspen shavings, reptile bark. It does not 
specifically say anything. So it's very vague there. Ball pythons require a temperature gradient, a cool side and a warm side, that's true. It says place a daytime heat bulb over the habitat to provide warmth. They suggest using a heat bulb which I don't have a huge problem with, honestly. I've been seeing a lot more people starting to use heat bulbs for snakes as opposed to heat pads because heat bulbs are more natural as far as, you know, in the wild they get overhead heat. I don't really hate the idea of using a heat bulb. So it does say turn off for 12 hours at night. So that's good. You do want to turn the light off so they have a photo period and it also gives them a cool down at night, which is going to help better replicate what happens in the wild as well. So that's honestly not terrible advice. However, this is where we're gonna revert to why this picture is terrible. So it suggests using thermometers and hygrometers to measure the temperature and humidity. And in the picture, it shows the analog thermometers and hygrometers. I do not like the analog ones. They just are not accurate most of the time. I always recommend using a digital thermometer and hygrometer just because digital ones tend to be a lot more accurate. Not only that, but if you look at where they are placed up in the enclosure, they're placed at the very top of the enclosure which doesn't really make any sense because the snake's going to be spending all of its time at the bottom of the enclosure mostly. So why would you put them up at the top of the enclosure if you want to measure the temperature and humidity at the level the snake is going to be at? Because there is going to be a difference. If I take a temp gun and measure the temperature at the bottom of one of my enclosures versus the very top of one of the enclosures, there's going to be a difference by a few degrees. Aside from that, while we're looking at this picture, it is also terrible because there's only one hide in that picture and they need at least two hides. It's a very bare open enclosure. There's barely any foliage in there and it looks like they're kind of showing the snake on aspen shavings, which isn't a terrible thing to keep ball pythons on, but it can be. I don't like aspen shavings because of how dry they are and it doesn't hold in humidity very well. However, it can work if you're measuring the humidity and maybe the humidity in your house just naturally stays higher and you can somehow keep your snake on aspen while also having the humidity high enough that it's not having stuck shed. I think that it can work, but I just personally wouldn't recommend aspen. I would personally not use it for ball pythons. And that's from personal experience. When I first got a ball python, I kept it on aspen shavings. And yeah, I had issues because of that. So I ended up not using aspen anymore and I didn't have issues anymore. But I would recommend maybe just trying dirt. Maybe you'll like it more. It looks better too, in my opinion. Back to the other side where all the bullet points are. Next it says, place two hides, one on the warm side and one on the cool side. Use sphagnum moss as bedding in the warm side hut to keep it damp to create a humidity hut. It says to use two hides, which is good. It's just weird because the actual picture doesn't really look like it has two hides. What I also don't like about the picture is it shows a half log hide and those aren't good hides because it's completely open on both sides and you want more of like a cave that they can go into where there's only one opening so they feel more secure. It says to use sphagnum moss on the warm side hide to create a humid hide. That's not a terrible thing to do. Some people actually do that if they find that their snake is having trouble shedding. Just in my opinion, if you're keeping proper humidity levels and just naturally raising it a little bit when they go into shed, they shouldn't have any issues shedding and they shouldn't need a humid hide. Sock the tank with branches for hiding and climbing. So that's a good suggestion. Mist your python habitat as needed to maintain humidity or use a fogger. You probably don't need to use a fogger for a ball python though, just because they don't need that high of humidity. Although I guess you could use one a little bit if you really wanted to, but misting will be just fine. Don't, don't let those PetSmart employees trick you into buying a fogger when you don't need one. All right, so next it says, what should I feed my ball python? It says, one time weekly, rodents. We recommend frozen and thawed rodents for safety of pet and pet parent. Note, snakes should be offered food at night, although adults may not feed for several weeks at a time. Water, a dish of water to drink from and soak and should be offered fresh daily. Next it says, when should I contact a veterinarian? In addition to regularly scheduled appointments, contact your reptile veterinarian if you notice the following signs. Runny droppings for more than two days. That doesn't really make sense to me because snakes literally poop 
as frequently as they eat. So if you feed your snake once a week, it's probably gonna poop like once a week. It's not like they poop every single day. So I'm not sure why it says runny droppings for more than two days as if they're like a dog that's going to poop every single day. But yeah, if your snake's having consistent runny droppings, then that might be a little bit alarming. Eating or drinking less. I can see how that could be alarming, but also a ball python could easily go off of food for like three months and it wouldn't be the end of the world, as long as they're not losing weight. So if they were losing weight, then yes, you should be alarmed. But if your snake chooses to just not eat for a couple months, that's just what ball pythons do. Discharge from eyes, nose, and mouth. That's a good reason to see the vet, I would say. Shedding problems or discolored skin. So if your snake is having shedding problems, it doesn't necessarily mean it needs to go to the vet. It probably means you need to change something about your husbandry. You're probably doing something wrong. Avoidance of the basking area or more time spent hiding. So that's kind of confusing to me a little bit just because ball pythons spend most of their time hiding anyways. So I don't know why more time spent hiding would be a reason to go to the vet. I don't know if I would take my ball python to the vet because I thought it was hiding too much. Decreased frequency of droppings. Yeah, if your snake isn't pooping as frequently as you think it should be, that could mean impaction, and that's probably not a good thing. So yeah, that's a good one. Open mouth breathing or excessive noise when breathing. That is a really good reason to go to the vet because that probably means respiratory issues. That was the entire inside of the care guide. So overall, like it wasn't the absolute worst care guide ever. Like you're not gonna be completely off of the mark if you follow this, but there's still a lot of room for improvement here. On the back, we have this really fun shopping checklist. It says, what will I need for my ball python? 40 gallon terrarium or larger. Let's put an emphasis on the or larger. Daylight bulb or under tank heat mat. If you use an under tank heat mat, make sure you are using a thermostat as well. It does not have thermostat on this list, but if you are going to use a under tank heater, you do need a thermostat because if you leave it unregulated, it will 100% go over 90 degrees. They actually can go up to like 130 degrees. When that happens, it burns your snake. And then that's another reason to add to the list of, uh, when should I contact a veterinarian? When you burn your snake from not using a thermostat. You might ask, why do they not have a thermostat on the shopping list? It's because PetSmart doesn't sell thermostats. They do sell heat pads though. Habitat, thermometers, two and a hygrometer. Water dish large enough for snake to soak in. Artificial slash natural rock or wood hides. Aspen, coconut fiber, or reptile carpet slash bedding. Branches for climbing and hiding. It says food bowl, but I'm just going to go out on a limb here and assume that they meant water. No, no, they said water dish. Up above, they already said water dish. So they said food bowl. You will be feeding your snake a whole rodent. So you don't, you're not gonna like chop it up and put it in a bowl. You're not, you're not feeding your snake like kibble. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, you don't really need a food bowl for a snake, but I guess if you wanted to be really fancy about it and serve your snake a rat on a platter or something, I guess you could try it. Frozen rodents and feeding tongs. So yeah, that's the shopping checklist. That's the ball python care guide from PetSmart and it's kind of trash. So if you are getting a ball python, if you're planning on it, don't go to PetSmart. I would recommend going online to a breeder, going to a local reptile expo, or try to find like a locally owned pet store at the very least where you can buy a ball python. I just, I just don't recommend going to chain pet stores because they're not gonna give you good information first of all, but you also shouldn't be relying on pet stores for information. But I think the whole moral of this video is do not go to a pet store not knowing how to take care of an animal. You wanna do all your research beforehand and like do all the research like online. Don't just walk into PetSmart and be like, what do I do? You're gonna end up with this and th this is not good. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what PetSmart care guide you would like me to review next. If you would like me to do it again, and if you do, then make sure to give this one a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. 
and subscribe to my channel if you're new here and if you want to learn more about some cool animals or if you want to just see my pets or something like that then if you want to just stick around and be my friend then hit the subscribe button or something i don't know I'm really good at convincing people to stay. You can also optionally follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I will see you guys in my next video.